The Gifford team is then taken to the LKC gym. This will be their base of operations for the next two days. Beds will be brought in later in the evening, but for now, the Gifford team, along with the Matabeleland development side that they have travelled with, will take a moment to stretch their legs and take in the new surroundings. It is a bit surreal for some of the players. However, soon, much to everyone's delight, it's time for dinner. The next day is overcast and chilly. Perfect weather for rugby. The team, now dressed in their number ones, sit and listen attentively as the facts of the tour are explained. Yes, they've come here to play rugby and enjoy themselves. But this tour is also about something more important. In essence, the tour is a confidence building exercise for Gifford Old Boys worldwide to see for themselves that the Gifford Old Boys development initiative means business. Many Gifford Old Boys in the diaspora are hesitant and frankly skeptical of this initiative and its ability to deliver on set goals. The rugby team is being used to demonstrate the capacity and the capability of Old Boys to work together in achieving the turning around of Gifford High School's fortunes. One of the sponsors of the tour, Walter Solomon, talks with pride about the school and the fond memories he has of his time there. Walter has also brought his 12-year-old son Keith and it's a proud moment for him as a dad when young Keith gets to hand out the warm-up t-shirts to the team. It's clear on the Gifford team's faces that these will be moments cherished for a lifetime and that the importance of this day cannot be underestimated. The team, now cloaked in their splendid new warm-up t-shirts, set to work in getting ready for their matches. The basic rhythms and timing are worked on. Of course, there are unforeseen challenges, like trying to look cool when warming up in front of girls, something Gifford boys are not used to. The warm-up is also to help the team get over the dead legs one gets after a long journey whilst seated in a bus. But first, the official welcoming and briefing ceremony. A chance to size up the opposition and try to get rid of the butterflies in the stomach. And then, it's time to put on the game faces for the business at hand. And to give the final pep talk is Ophias Mutandavari from the class of 2008, who holds both the Gifford and Zimbabwean school's 100 meter sprint record at a blistering 10.48 seconds. And finally, it's the turn of the coaches to emphasize the tactics. It's now time for the business at hand. The t-shirts come off and it's time to line up for the match. Numbers ten edges. The Gifford team announces its intentions. Loosely translated, they are boldly declaring that they cannot be beaten and that they will win out in the end. There's time for one last roar before the kickoff. But the problems with the kicking game that will haunt Gifford for the next couple of days start. The local side, Clamelo, 
don't seem overawed by their fearsome Zimbabwean opponents. And they give as good as they get. And if Gifford thought they could sleepwalk through their first match, a brilliant individual effort by the Tamelo First Centre rudely awakens them from their slumber. The captain, Perseverance Mzogu, gathers his team and lays down the law. Not only does he lay down the law, but he takes the law into his own hands and scores a scintillating 60 metre try to draw Gifford level. Gifford starts to assert its authority. Passes start to stick and another try is scored, this time courtesy of Sam Makonesi. At halftime, the coaches are clearly not impressed with the team's first half exploits. With their ears still ringing from the coaches tearing a strip off them at halftime, Gifford start the second half with much more focus and intent. They start to push the tempo of the game up to a level Tamelo can't keep up with. Once again, it's Skip and Glover with the try. Gifford also starts to get physical with Camelo, whilst keeping their foot on the tempo of the game. Camelo starts to feel the pressure. At certain stages, it's as if Gifford is coming from every direction. The captain once again leads from the front and scores the try after sustained pressure. As for the kicking, well, it's a work in progress. Despite the problems with his kicking, when it comes to thinking fast, Chisu is still a very capable fly half. Final score, Gifford 36 to Tlamelo's 5. The first half was really bad. But uh, we worked on our mistakes during the after. Yeah. Most of the balls were not being passed uh, down the line, and there were too much knock-ons. But during half time, we managed to solve the problem okay. of uh, having the ball reaching to the last guy, okay. and that really helped us. We okay. just have to work on our mistakes, and I'm sure we'll come up with a better team than uh, the one we just had. Right. And uh, we also got a match later. Hopefully, we'll do better than this. Ominous words for the next opponent from the captain, and that opponent is another local private school, oh, Lachaya Academy. Normally they would provide more robust opposition, but this is a rebuilding year for Lachaya. And to add to their coach's misery, four boys are banned by their parents from playing the night before the tournament. The result is an awestruck young side up against fearsome opposition. Gifford, for their part, show no mercy. At times, the only thing slowing them down is the fast-fading light. This is what the game looks like to the naked human eye. But luckily, modern technology means the cameraman can now follow the game better than the spectators can. Gifford, keep up the effort on the accelerator. Despite the score, the coaches like their coaching counterparts worldwide still seem underwhelmed by the efforts of the team and order them to keep the pace up. And it soon becomes clear that the captain, Nzlovu, is a man on a mission. He scores virtually all the tries. Coach. The score, 
is 42 nil. By the next morning, the weather has improved as the coaches get the team ready. The local fans are already in good voice. And Gifford arrived with mean intentions. And that is not good news for the next opponent, Martis Bay of Francis Town. The kicking game is still a work in progress, but it doesn't matter as 6 foot 4 lock Daniel Nyati shows his athleticism to score a long range try. The tries keep on coming. The kicks, well, who needs them anyway? Gifford start to put the phases together. And Chisu finishes off the move. And it's time for some lawn bowling practice. No matter what they do, things keep coming up trumps for Gifford. And finally, the long-suffering Chisu gets a kick to go right for him. Martis Bay clearly cannot keep up at this level. A poor clearance kick allows fly half Chisu to show off his individual brilliance with a long-range solo effort try. Makonesi scores again. Then flank turned prop Ronald Chabata joins in the action. Meanwhile, Lock Daniel Nyati is doing a good John Eels impression by first handling the kickoff and then following the skipper, which is usually a good idea in this tournament. Another try. Now the game is clearly a rout. The captain Glover scores once again. Then it's time to show sportsmanship with a quick handshake. The lunch break is all about eating bananas and drinking copious amounts of energy drinks to maintain their electrolyte imbalance. No formal meals as the games are coming quick and fast. The semi-final is against fellow Zimbabweans, the Matabeleland development side. And both sides show solidarity and share a prayer. However, once the game starts, the two sides show very little if any Christian charity towards each other. It is a physical match with no quarter asked and no quarter given. It's first blood to Gifford as they score first. They score another try. An errant clearance kick and Gifford learned the hard way that even at this level, kicks that don't find touch will be punished. Gifford scores one more try to put the game out of reach. Gifford escapes with a 17-7 victory. They will need to play better in the final against LKC. And so to the final. 
with gleaming medals on show as well as the glittering trophy beckoning. Gifford will face their toughest opponent yet. LKC is well coached, well funded and well supported by the school's administration. They have also had a very dominant and impressive path to the final. And, as the talk in their pre-game huddle suggests, they fully intend to use all these benefits to their advantage. It boils down to here. You understand? It's down to the heart. Do you believe? I believe. Do you believe? We believe! I want you guys to go onto that field and give 100%. Go onto that field. Make every single tackle count. Run every ball like it's your last ball. Set pieces. Don't lose one. Penalties avoid. Rucks clean. Give your scrum up a clean ball. Scrum up, run that ball down the line and make sure these guys run. You understand? Yes, sir. Oh, comments away. Oh, let's play <coughs> effort. And let's win. And let's make history. Like I told you, there are three pieces of history. Beating Gifford from Zimbabwe will be history. Taking Dalimet will be history. And also having a clean sheet in this tournament. Fantastic. You understand? We yes, prove why we went to Wales. What experience did we get? This is it. You understand? Yes, sir. You would have proved yourself, yourselves to be uh, the team that set a new standard 2016. That sentiment is shared by their vociferous fans. Victory is seemingly assured. LKC's team comes out of the tunnel, brimming with confidence. Gifford are clearly the underdogs. <laughs> However, as in the case of most finals, the underdog strikes first. Gifford blasts up the middle and then recycles the ball out wide to stun the crowd with a try in the opening moments. It's Makunesi again. LKC regroup. This is still a home match for them after all. LKC take the game to Gifford and uncharacteristically Gifford is succumbing to the finals pressure, giving away penalty after penalty. The LKC fans are still confident. Meanwhile, Gifford keep kicking deep and pinning LKC in their half. LKC, however, keeps the pressure on Gifford. Gifford's lack of variation in their lineouts is exposed. It's half time, with Gifford leading 5 0. The LKC fans, for their part, are still confident. This is, after all, the best team they've ever had, and arguably the best team in the tournament. The second half starts, and the game gets more physical, and the pressure on Gifford mounts.
and then disaster. With just a few minutes to go, a powerful run by the LKC winger beats the Gifford defence and he scores under the post. LKC are now in the lead, 7-5 after the conversion. The LKC fans are ecstatic. They can almost taste victory. The pressure on Gifford grows and they give up more penalties. And then a lucky break. With moments left before the final whistle, once again an errant kick proves to be fatal. This time it's LKC with an aimless kick. Gifford choose to return the favour. They kick deep back into LKC territory. The result is more pressure on LKC in their half and the ball is turned over. But there is no tomorrow. The moment is now. Gifford has to grab it. The ball is passed down the line, but with an overlap on his right, Chapata decides that fortune favours the brave and rumbles through for the winning try. Gifford is ecstatic. LKC, on the other hand, are in despair. The cruelty of sport is on display at this very moment. The final whistle blows, and for the victors, joy and celebration. For the losers, there is a depth of despair that is hard to fathom. But for Gifford, this all doesn't matter. The adrenaline is still flowing. The trophy presentation is a somber affair for some. But for Gifford, a familiar face from the 1980s and 1990s as former Zimbabwean referee and former chairman of the Matabeleland Rugby Union, Bryn Williams gives out the medals. It has been a long and draining weekend, but for Gifford, they don't care. The aches and pains will come later, but for now, it's joy and relief. Gifford, the winners of Dalimet 2016, please, Captain, come forward. All right, let's give them a hand of applause. And, as is the custom these days, it's time for the selfies.
And now for some business with some of the old boys. Okay, Wanele Ngube, class of uh, 96. Uh, started at Kifford 91 to 96, uh, head boy 95 96. Uh, just to the old boys, uh, we've just been discussing with Martin about uh, setting up the banking facilities and uh, formalizing the initiative. So, most important is that whichever country we choose, we must have free flow of currency and we must have resident members of the initiative. So speaking to our bankers in Botswana, we would obviously need a constitution. We need to have uh, members who represent uh, the body who will be resident and become signatories. But what it allows, if this becomes the avenue, is that um, we would be able to create your online banking, create all those facilities for everyone to be able to, to, be able to access the banking records but we would also be able to receive and uh, remit funds because Botswana acts more like the, the havens. It's, it's got an IFSC uh, provision within its, uh, its uh, company regulations. So we have a number of uh, entities like Bank ABC, a couple of them who've uh, actually had their head offices, uh, dual head offices here in South Africa. So we're looking at that as a potential advantage and uh, probably a better um, starting point uh, since Botswana still has its uh, AAA rating and might have been downgraded to AA these days but that's that's the premise for us proposing Botswana and we're looking forward to the rest of the old boys giving their views. Right, my name is Danessa Jack started at Kifford 1980 to 83 uh, it's a good thing to see these boys coming here I'd like to encourage especially the guys who are in the rugby team with Martin, me Oh, Michael Titepo, where are they? We need you guys. Gifford has to go back where it used to be. I would love us if we could, especially the 83, 84 class, to contact each other and do something. No. Office Ntandavar is my name. Uh, graduation class of 2008. I'm currently a chemical engineer at a meat processing company in Lobatse, here in Botswana. Hello there, the name is Robson. Was it given uh, from 95 to year 2000? Uh, my name is Ruben Kumpasa. I've been at Gifford uh, 91 to 94. Um, basically, I've played rugby all my life. For me, I think um, the old boys are doing a good job, but uh, they, they still need for, for the old boys and the school admin to, to be in sync and understand each other on, 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 on what we are trying to do as the old boys to help the school. My name is Rumbizai Tembo, and I'm from Pretoria. I'm a Zimbabwean by nationality. And I'm here uh, to support my son and the rest of the crew and I'm very happy with this rugby tour and they're doing very great and I just want these guys to take it over. And great. I just want to thank the sponsors, uh, sponsoring of everything, the transport, the food, the accommodation and everything. Thank you. Here at Kulubeng and Buzwana. My name is Perseverance Lovu, captain of Kifford High School, 2016 rugby team. Uh, my name is Nyasha Chiso, vice captain of uh, rugby team. Kifford 2016. We'd like to thank uh, all the guys that made this possible, that all the guys that made this weekend a success. Uh, without them, we couldn't be here. We'd like to thank them for everything that they've done. So we really appreciate it. I would want to thank the old boys for supporting us all the way from Zimbabwe for the transport, for the accommodation, and for the mills. We would really want uh, you guys to support us. My name is Kudakwashi Nyuke. Uh, and uh, I'm in upper six at Gifford uh, and I would like to thank the old boys for, for sponsoring us and uh, uh, it was for a good, good cause and uh, we won, we won the, the cup and we would like to thank you for all your support. Uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Zilla Rinkoma. I'm in Form 3. Uh, I would like to say thanks to the old boys and we really appreciate everything that you've done for us. My uh, name is Cedric Cooper. I'm in 4 at Keyford. Uh, I play lock, number four. I'd like to thank the old boys for everything that they've done for us. I thank you for giving us beautiful balls, uh, great food and everything. Just the hospitality is all nice and just enjoy ourselves. Thank you.
Okay, great. Um, my name is Lise Komketua. I'm a gifted boy in Form 5, uh, Lower 6 Arts. Uh, first of all, I'd just like to thank the sponsors for their support. Um, like he said already, in terms of food um, and the balls, we really needed that support. And we'll keep on fighting to impress you and make sure things are the way they're supposed to go. Thank you. Okay. My name is Daniel Nyati and I play lock number five. I just, like, I just want to thank you, the sponsors and all the location and my team and staff for being there for me. My name is Inoso Nnubi, doing Form 4. Uh, we, thank the, we thank the coaches and the sponsors that, that they do appreciate what they're doing for us. Thank you. My name is Sema Konese. I play second center. Uh, I just want to thank the sponsors for everything they've done for us. Uh, and just want to let you know that we do everything to keep you guys on our side. Because we've always been waiting for this chance. It's sad to get sponsors in Zimbabwe, but we've got a chance and great with both the ends. My name is Fortune Kumalo. I'm a lower six at Gifford I. Um, I play a uh, prop position uh, number three. I just want to thank the sponsors for sponsoring us and our coaches, especially my teammates for struggling and uh, winning this game. As you can see, I'm carrying this trophy. Uh, I, I think that's one. Thank you. All right. All right. I go by the name of Ngozi Pulu. I'm a flanker number six. And I would like to thank all the old Kifotians that are supporting us. We hope you are going to be behind the Stingers every time. We thank you so much for your help and support. Thank you. Okay. I'm Ronald Shabata and I flank. I, I, I play flank and uh, I would like to extend my sincere gratitude to the old Kifodians for organizing everything for us. Uh, this match has been, uh, this tournament, I mean, has been uh, an eye opener to all of us and I just want to extend my sincere gratitude once more. Uh, to the to everyone who supported us. Shout out to all the keyboard. Thank you. Okay. Uh, you know when they say people take the, the brand too far, <laughs> the lifestyle too far? This is Mr. Kwanele's Nubia's car. Okay? You notice the color? You, you, the interior matches Gifford colors. I mean, some people take things too far. Now, having said that, I have a girlfriend and the only reason I'm dating her <laughs> the only reason I'm dating You was dating, you yeah, were I dating I was dating her Until that comment <laughs> Until that comment Come over here, come here, come here, come here And she come must here. be wearing whose colors? Yeah, no, I can say that because I was supposed to be wearing a Gifford Old Boys t-shirt But guess who has decided she likes Gifford t-shirts? Oh, okay, now I think, I think some of the old boys are getting a bit too much of uh, seeing what I I'm I was there. showing the back. Uh, you were showing the back, okay, <laughs> alright. Thank you very much guys, see you, ciao.